Well, the Most High be praised today on this Wednesday evening. I want to say shalom to each and every one of you who are joining us today by live stream. Bless the Most High Yahuwah. I trust that your week has been blessed thus far and that you have been experiencing the graciousness and the blessings of the Creator in your life in the mighty name of Yahshua. His blessed name be praised. Well, today we want to take some time to share from the scriptures. And of course, we out here again by the chain of river and uh, it's a little overcast today uh, not as sunny as it was last week but we bless the most high that it's not raining <laughs> hallelujah we'd have to be doing this somewhere else but we bless the almighty for his goodness and his graciousness to us so for those of you who have your bibles and i trust that you have your bibles every time you meet with us here as we go through the scriptures we're going to go to the book of Matthew chapter 13. Now, in our last teaching, we were in chapter 13 and we dealt with the wheat and the tares or the wheat and the weeds. But today we're going to look at a verse that's further along in the 13th chapter. We're going to go to uh, verse 51 of chapter 13. So we're going to go to verse 51. <laughs> of chapter 13 and as we begin at the 51st verse we're going to read through verse 51 and verse 52 and um, before we read this I do want to say that all of the passages leading up to this particular set of verses all had to do with the kingdom of Elohim, where Messiah was given parables on the kingdom of Elohim. And this particular one is also a parable about the kingdom of Elohim. But there's something that Yahshua himself wants to convey in this message that he gives with regard to the scribe of the kingdom and we want to focus on that so let's go to verse 51 and then we're going to read verse 51 and 52 of Matthew chapter 13 and it says have you understood all this they answered yes all of that that he asked about what they understood were those parables regarding the kingdom of Elohim and then he makes the statement and he says and he said to them that every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old let's have a word of prayer at this time Abba Yah, thank you right now once again for this opportunity to be able to share these scriptures today. I pray, Father, that those who have assembled themselves to hear the scriptures, that you would give them an understanding, uh, give them insight on what our Messiah, Yahshua, was saying, and cause us to be able to have a, have a, a more clear perspective on our responsibility at least those who are teachers of the scriptures so that we'll know exactly what the Messiah expects out of our lives and father we will bless you in advance and thank you for everything that you reveal to us and make known to us that you bring back to the surface that may have been buried so that we might be able to walk in your uncovered truths and do those things that are pleasing to you. We thank you today in the mighty name of Yahshua. Amen. Bless the Holy One of Israel. Now, in the previous 
verses prior to reading verses 51 and 52 um, Messiah had given a number of parables about the kingdom one of them had to do with righteous and the wicked growing up together and at the end of the age there'll be a separation and there was another parable where he did the same thing he talked about how that it was like throwing a net out into the sea and gathering all types of sea creatures fish of every kind and then there would be a separation that which would be clean that which would be unclean or that which would be good that which would be would be would be bad excuse me for uh, jumbling my words but you know the idea has to do with the fact that as it pertains to the purpose of the father we live in this world and there are those who are considered to be the righteous and those who are considered to be the wicked. And there's a space of time that the Almighty is allowing, which we are still in today. Amen. And he is allowing those who have not had the opportunity to turn in repentance to come to him and be on the side of the righteous. Yes, amen. So in all of these parables that he was giving, he was giving these messages of what's going to happen with the righteous and with the wicked. But now when you get down to these two verses, the Messiah wanted his disciples to understand what the situation was going to be like and how things would play out. He gives a word right here, which... I believe is given specifically to his disciples. Primarily, the parables were given for everyone who was listening to get and to grasp hold to and to hear the message. But verses 51 and 52, he wanted to show his disciples their responsibility. So he uses the term scribe. Now, the scribe, every time we read the term scribe in the Bible, in most cases, it's always lumped together with the Pharisees and Sadducees. And it's always seen almost in a negative light. You know, it talks about that, you know, then came the scribes and Pharisees and they tried to test the Messiah or the Messiah rebuked the scribes and the Pharisees. So we always see scribes and the Pharisees lumped together and it's almost as if the scribe is a negative um, individual. But for all intents and purposes, the scribe is a title of a person who was a part of the sect of the Pharisees that was not just a writer. You know, when we hear the word scribe, we think that there's someone who is a copyist or someone who is translating scriptures or someone who is writing out formal documents. And all of these things the scribe did. But the scribe was more than just person, a person who was a writer of documents or a transmitter of scriptures. It was a person who was learned in the Torah, and it was a person who also was skilled in the interpretation of the Torah. So the scribe in the first century was someone who was regarded as a teacher of the scriptures. So anytime you see the term scribe in the Bible, it will be more appropriate to put in that position of where the words located you could just stick right there teacher of Torah because that's what the scribe was recognized as but here in this passage that we're reading the Messiah says the scribe that is trained for the kingdom huh this is different you don't really find this type of language or a title of the scribe being referred to in connection with the kingdom. Hmm. But what Messiah says is this, look, bear with me, it's winds blowing out here. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
It says, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven. So what the Messiah is saying is that there will be those who will be regarded as scribes trained for the kingdom of heaven. In other words, teachers of Torah that are trained to do the work of the kingdom. Very, very interesting. You know, as much as I have read these scriptures, reading through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and I've read across this passage many, many times, I haven't really taken that much time to dig into it like I'm doing right now. But what we find is that in the Messianic Israelite community, we have scribes, people who are called, as the Bible says, teachers of the Torah. And so a teacher of the Torah or a teacher of the scriptures is somebody who takes the Bible, and this is very simple, is somebody who takes the Bible and begins to explain it, to interpret it to share what it means. And so Messiah Yahshua here in this verse says that a scribe that is trained for the kingdom is like this. He says, he's like a master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. So now we gotta break this down to really get the meaning of what the Messiah is saying right here. He's talking about a scribe. That means we have a teacher of the Torah, mm -hmm. a teacher of the scriptures, Amen. all right? Mm -hmm. And this teacher of the scripture is not someone who is just localized to those who were a part of the sect of the Pharisees, or those who were with those that did not believe in the Messiah, but it's referring to somebody who is trained to teach and preach the word of the Messiah and the things of the kingdom. Now, the Bible tells us that when the Messiah, Yahshua, commonly called Jesus, when he came, it says that he came preaching the message of the kingdom of Elohim, right? Yes, uh -huh. And the kingdom of Elohim is none other than the rule and the dominion of the most high Yahuwah in the earth. His kingdom rule and his kingdom reign in the earth comes through his son Yahshua who came into the world to die for the sins of the world but not only did he die but he rose from the dead he did all of that so that he could show that he is the one worthy being the one came from Elohim from heaven and to be Elohim in the flesh here on the earth. He did all of that. But here in these scriptures, when he talks about the kingdom, he's telling his disciples that I'm going to appoint you to be used to bear the same message of the kingdom. So when he talks about these scribes or those who are the teachers of the Torah, teachers of the word, he says, that they are like a master of a household. Now, during that time, a master or an owner of a household was generally somebody who had means, who had wealth, all right? And it's, and it's referring to somebody who it says, will go into their treasure and take out of their treasure, notice what it says, things that are new, and things that are old. This is interesting. When you go and you look in treasure, mm -hmm. treasure is something that is of great value. Yes. Right? Yes. Anytime you hear the word treasure, just think of a, hmm. a, a, a treasure box, for example. Mm -hmm. And it has all these precious jewels, gold coins, diamonds, Gold I bars. I mean, think about it. A, a treasure has all me. of those things. None of that. You know, and anytime a person who has all of that stuff, sometimes they may have treasure 
that may have been a part of their family for generations past. You know, there's some folk in the world that has some generational wealth. And when I say generational wealth, I'm talking about they have money that's in their family from their great, 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 yep. great grandparents, you know. Yep. Now, most of us, you know, <laughs> and I say, I know, I don't, I don't have generational wealth like that, you know. Most of us might not have wealth like that, but there are some people on the planet so, that have so, wealth so, that is generational. So, this is the thing that we want to. This thing we want to know. Uh -huh. And, and I'll, I'll get your question after I get finished with the teaching. Um, the thing that we want to know is that. The example that we give with somebody who may have a lot of wealth, they may have some old wealth and they may have some new wealth, but all of it is valuable. That's the point that I'm trying to make, or it wouldn't be called treasure. Now, how does this apply to somebody who's a teacher of the scriptures? All right. That somebody who is a teacher of the scriptures, a scribe trained in the kingdom of heaven, digs out of his treasure things new and things old. The treasure, as it pertains to the person who is a teacher of the scriptures or a scribe of the kingdom, is the scriptures. The scriptures, the Torah, the teachings of the Almighty, is regarded as the treasure when it comes to a person who is a teacher of the scriptures. That is the thing that is of great value. The scriptures, mm -hmm. that's the treasure. And then as the Messiah describes this treasure, he says that the scribe or the teacher of the Torah trained for the kingdom, takes out of his treasure things that are new and things that are old. Hmm. <clears throat> so when we apply that to the teachings of the scripture, the things that are new that Messiah talks about has to do with his teachings. That's what it has to do with in particular. Because the time in which the Messiah, Yahshua, was writing this, Yahshua was the one that was teaching things that appeared to be new to those who had a, a Pharisaic mindset or who had an interpretation of the Bible that was based upon the fact that you could only be saved and delivered based upon trusting in your works. But when the Messiah came, the Messiah taught that if a person has faith and they trust in him, they can be saved. Now that was not a new concept. That concept was deeply rooted in the faith that the Almighty gave through Moses. The Most High has always worked by a person coming into fellowship with him by having faith in him that has always been the way you get in relationship with the creator but the pharisees of the past began to teach some different things so when the messiah came and he began to start teaching things that were more in line with the original truth to them it sounded new but I would consider to be more of a refreshing of the truth. So Messiah's teaching, while it was yet something fresh, something that was new to those who were hearing it for the first time then, yet it was something that was relevant, not just for his time, but for all ages. But let's not stop there with just the new teachings. Let's not stop just with that. What we find here also, the Messiah said that a person takes out of his treasure things that are new and things that are old. So the Messiah 
also stated, and if we're making this comparison right and, uh, and applying it rightly, that the things that are new are of value, but the things that are old are of value. So what is the stuff that is old? Now, when we talk about that which is old, we're talking about that which is of antiquity, the antique stuff. So there are folks that have antiques, things that are old numerically, but are of great value. You know, there's, there's some stuff <laughs> that people have. Antique furniture, antique items that are of greater value than some of the new manufactured furniture that people can get today. Why? Because of the pricelessness of the antique. Now, when we look at the Bible, as this pertains to the Bible, we find that the Bible, when it refers to those things that are old, it has to do with the ancient texts of the scriptures. It has to do with that which has already been spoken. And that which has already been spoken has never been deleted, abrogated, or has it ever been made obsolete? But it is treasure. It is of value. It is necessary. So when we talk about things new and old, it's talking about all of the scriptures, all of the teachings of the Bible. And Messiah said that the scribe that is trained in the kingdom, is going to bring out of its treasure things new and things old. So what are we saying here? What we're saying here is that everyone who is a teacher of the scriptures, everyone that has been called to bring forth the word of the Most High, Yahuwah, and the message of his son, Yahshua, has to bring it out, not just in portions, not just as some would declare and preach and teach only the so-called New Testament but the whole Bible the Hebrew scriptures and the writings of the apostles see the scribe trained in the kingdom of heaven is the teacher of the scripture that's trained by the Messiah and the Holy Spirit to take all of the word of Elohim and take all of the teachings of Elohim and make them known to the believer just as the Messiah said when he gave the mandate he said go make disciples Teach them to observe everything I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And so, when he said, go and make disciples, and teach them to observe everything I have commanded you, the everything is all of the book. Now, some might be saying, well, you know what, we don't have scribes in this New Testament era. Really? Let's go and look at Matthew chapter 23. I want to show you a passage in Matthew chapter 23, verse 34. Because, you know, when we talk about Messiah and we preach about the Hebraicness of the faith, so oftentimes people tend to not see the connection that our faith is Israelite, they don't see the connection that it's all based and rooted in the Hebraic nature of the scriptures. But let's look at a verse here, Matthew chapter 23, verse 34. And it says, Therefore, I send you prophets and sages or wise people and scribes. Did you hear that? This is the Messiah talking. The Messiah says, therefore, I send you prophets, sages, and scribes. You hear that? So there are scribes, teachers of Torah that the Messiah has trained in order to go forth and to preach the message. And he says, some of them whom 
you will kill and crucify. And so, this is the thing. Those of us who are called as teachers in the scripture, we are teachers of the Torah in the Messiah. We bring forth all of the Bible to teach people the way of Elohim, to teach people the commandments of Elohim, and to teach people that the way in which all mankind can be restored to fellowship with the Father is through his Messiah, Yahshua from Nazareth, commonly called Jesus. He's the one. And once a person believes in him and receives him, then and only then, then and only then, do we begin to take upon ourselves the responsibility of living the life of holiness. And what is that life of holiness? For those of you who follow me, you've heard me talk about the fact that as a believer, we've all been called to pursue holiness. That life of holiness is none other than obedience to the teachings of the Most High. And that include the teachings in the Hebrew Scriptures as well as the teachings noted in the writings of the apostles. And so I want to encourage each and every one of you today, especially you that are called to serve the Most High and to bring forth the message of the kingdom, that you will remember that your responsibility is to bring out of the treasure of the word the Hebrew scriptures and the writings of the apostles all of the teachings in the Torah and all of the teachings that the Messiah Yahshua additionally gave us hallelujah I challenge each teacher of the scripture to do that because in doing that we honestly and truly fulfill the purpose of the Messiah Yahshua Hallelujah, bless his great name. Well, let us have a word of prayer at this time. Abba Yah, thank you right now for this opportunity. Thank you for the word that has been shared on today. And I pray, Father, that it has brought illumination, that it has caused those who have heard the teaching to see the scribe in a new light and to understand that their purpose is much more than just teaching certain portions of the Bible, but that all of the Bible must be preached. And those who are hearing for the first time that don't know Messiah Yahshua, may they come to faith in him. In the mighty name of Yahshua, we thank you right now. Amen. Amen. Well, we bless the Most High for each and every one of you who have been watching us by live stream and trust that you have been uh, encouraged through the teaching. We uh, thank you for watching and we thank you for, for hearing us today. We do ask that you continue to pray for us and with us. And for those of you who may be watching us for the first time, uh, go to our website at www.ncmmi.20m.com and you can view the information and materials that we have, we believe it'll be a blessing to you and that it will strengthen you in your walk with the Messiah. Be blessed. And also, I want you all to remember to pray for those who are here in the Alaska region. You know, we're out here giving the word, but also doing what we can to plant seeds in the hearts and lives of people. There are so many that need the almighty and to know his great love. So pray for the people here in this region. Bless the Almighty. Hallelujah. Shalom. Yeah, he does a study out here. We like to get the open.